welcome back to my channel. We are in a new month and we are starting off this month with another full tutorial. We're doing a little spaniel and we're going to be focusing mainly on these curly ears that we can see. Um, I'm going to break down the ears into different sections. Um, may take a couple of sections per ear, we'll see. Um, but I know a lot of people can struggle with spaniel ears so I am going to make sure that we have quite a lot of focus on the ear, especially this ear here, which is obviously more in frame. Um, as usual, we're going to start the tutorial though with the eye. Um, so this part of the tutorial is with the eye and a bit of the fur around the eyes. Um, and then we'll start moving on to the ear. I'm thinking the ear is probably going to be broken down into at least two sections, maybe three sections for this ear especially, and then probably just one section for this ear. Um, again, you can always speed up the tutorial if you don't want to follow the whole thing. Um, but I'm enjoying doing these full length tutorials. I know a few of you are enjoying following along. Um, a few of you have already drawn the Border Collie and the Italian Greyhound and the images have been amazing. You've all been doing such a great job and it's really nice to see. So yeah, I'm going to get straight into this. All the links and resources you need are linked below. The line art and the reference photo um, will be linked below. The line art is on my Facebook group. If you're not a member, um, please join. We have a lovely community over there and I'm quite active in that group as well. The reference photo is from Unsplash. So I will give you a link to the reference photo so you can download it for yourself. I've zoomed into the head because like I said, I want the focus to be on the ear in this tutorial um i have asked about doing full bodies so i think at some point we're going to do a full body maybe next month um but focus more on maybe like a dog lying down so yeah i'm going to stop waffling now i'm going to zoom you into this eye and we're going to get started so this spaniel is a liver spaniel so we're dealing more with the brown pigments and red pigments especially when it comes to the eye and the nose we've got the uh, the pigment changes with the color of the dog so a black dog would have black pigment with the nose which is why we go in with the sepia quite a lot with this guy i'm actually going to start off with the kaput mortem um, from the polychromos this is because we don't have as much of the black pigment around the eyes and the nose when we come to doing the nose um so instead of using the dark sepia, I'm going to start off with the kaput mortem and then if I need to go in and darken the kaput mortem, I'll go on top with the dark sepia. Now, exactly how we do with the dark sepia, I'm going to use the kaput mortem in the same way by outlining the shape of the eye and getting the shape and size of the eye in first. So I'm going to start around... Oh, I'm just going to lighten this graphite a bit. So I'm just going to, okay, so I'm just going to come in and go around this eye and all I'm doing is looking at the shapes and following those shapes with a kaput mortem. So I'm just going to clean this edge, right, so I'm just following the shape of the eye with this kaput mortem and mapping in all the different shapes that I can see. So it's important when you're drawing an animal and it's a liver pointed dog to really focus on these pinkish tones. If we went in and made all this with a dark sepia, which I will be coming in with some dark sepia, but if I did the whole of this outlining with the dark sepia, we're going to be changing the colour of the dog a little bit too much. And obviously that's not what we want to be doing. Um, and that's going to come down here. So I'm just mapping in all these different shapes I can see and I'm just going to... And this is very light pressure. You can see how light my pressure is. I'm not pressing hard at all. And that's going to curve down into pinkness there. And then it's quite dark along here. So all I've done is I've mapped in the, the pinkish tones with my kaput mortem. 
Um, I'm now going to just get my dark sepia. So along here, the top of the eye and the eyelid, I can see that it is dark. So I'm going to use the, uh, the dark sepia along here. Just so that I know that it's darker here. And I do want my dark sepia to be there. And I also want this edge of the eye where we've got some of the eyelashes coming in very lightly with my dark sepia again along here. So you can see it just maps in shapes. That's all I've done. And around the bottom of this eye is quite a little darker, not too dark, but just a little bit. So I'm just going to very light pressure around this eye. Okay, so you can see I've used very, very light pressure and we have got the general shape of the eye. So now we can go in and start making this eye come to life. So uh, stick into that dark sepia and I'm just going to map in these darker shapes I can see. So we've got a line cross up coming down here. And one here, um, and then my dark indigo. I'm going to go over that dark sepia with my dark indigo just along here. Again, I'm not going to make this as, as um, a duplicate of the reference photo, be similar, but it's going to be my own piece, like I did with the Italian Greyhound last month. Okay, right, I'm going to take my, da uh, my um, words, ivory, <laughs> um, and I'm going to apply this as a base layer. Now, I'm making sure that I'm looking at this reference photo because in the centre of this eye, it's quite light. We've got the highlight in the centre of the eye. So the ivory is acting as a base for the orange tones. So where you can see this orange colour in the eye, the orange pigment, that's where your ivory is going to act as your base layer. So I'm just going to bring this all along here. Medium pressure just to help smooth out the two for that paper. So again, I'm using the Fabriano Artistico hot press watercolor paper as usual. Um, you can use whatever paper you've got to hand. You just may have to change the techniques ever so slightly. Okay. Then coming in with the burnt ochre and circular motions. Across all of that ivory base. Right, I've just zoomed you in a bit more so that you can actually see the eye a bit clearer. Um, I didn't realise I was so far out last time. So this is still the burnt oak I'm just going over. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to take the brown ochre. And I'm sort of just going to go over the edge here. Very circular motions, very light pressure. Now I've got no pig, no base layer here, so you can see it's kind of grainy. That's fine. Um, I'm going to work on top of that in a minute. And we're going to start pushing the pigment into the paper and it will work out. And then I'm going to bring this around the eye here. Okay, um, I'm just going to get my um, cinnamon in here, circular motion where we've added that brown ochre where there's no base layer over the top there. And then I'm going to take my ivory 
and I'm going to go over the top, pressing hard and now push that pigment into the paper. I'm being careful not to mix the ivory and the dark indigo together because we'll get a green and we don't want a green. Okay, uh, I'm going to take my burnt ochre again and I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure just to really get that orangey tone coming through now. Um, maybe that I just need a bit of a sharper pencil. It's not as sharp a point as it could be. Having a sharp pencil on the Fabriano is definitely going to be helpful. Okay, and then I've got my Sanguine. Um, and I am going to take the Sanguine in this corner. I may get the burnt sienna, we'll see, but this might be enough. It's got a really nice amber eye, is this dog? Or she? He or she? <laughs> Bring it along here as well. And along the top of the eye. And then I'm going back over with the, um, I'm going to get the cinnamon actually in here, along this edge anyway. And then I'll take the burnt ochre and go over that again with the burnt ochre. Okay, I'm then going to grab my burnt sienna and I'm going to darken this section here again. And along here. Okay, right, so I'm now going to take my, um, where's my kaput mortem? I'm just going to go around the eye where I've got that edge that I can see, just with this kaput mortem. So make sure you've got a really sharp pencil. Just going around the edge of this eye. Making sure I'm using that sharp edge. <laughs> In here as well, a little bit. Just darken there. Um, go back to my sanguine, just along the edge of this eye. I'm just going to darken it up. Okay. Um, then the dark sepia. Again, very light pressure. I don't want this to be too dark. Just over that kaput mortem line that I've just added. And it's in this corner here as well. So I'm just going to press a little harder with this dark sepia here. In this eye. Okay, right. Then I'm going to take my um, cold grey one. And in this white section um, of the eye, I'm going to add this cold grey one. I'm just going to go over that dark indigo and dark sepia a bit. Being careful not to blend into those yellow tones because we'll get that blue that we don't want. Um, and then I've got my cold grey three. And I'm going to use this cold grey free to build up some of these shadows within this eye. So along here. And again, it doesn't need to be an exact copy. We just want a nice reflection going on. 
um, I'm going to take my burnt umber because um, I can see some of these darker brown tones. I'm just going to use this. So I'm not making an exact copy of this dog again. I want this dog to be my my own. Um, it's an original. I don't want it to look exactly like the reference photo. Um, and then back to the burnt ochre. So this is something that I do quite a lot with my originals. I make them my own. I follow... Um, the reference photo for the shapes and some of the tonal values but I do like to make the piece my my own I want it to be um, unique to me um, I've got the sky blue we've got a really nice blue center here so this is the sky blue just gonna blend that outwards and then take the dark indigo So I like to start with the eye because now you can see in this eye we've got some really dark darks and we're starting to really get some nice um, lights shining through as well. Uh, this is the Beaster. Just going to... Yeah, that's a nice colour here. Okay, right. And then the Burnt Ochre. So now we need to do the um, eye. So I want my warm grey wool. And along here we've got this pinkish tone. So I'm going about halfway across the eye and I'm applying the warm grey one as the base layer here. Um, and in this corner, I'm going to use the one grey one. Um, just take that cold grey, cold grey one for the rest of this eye here. And I'm going over that one grey one in that corner. I'm then going to grab the cinnamon. Um, and I'm just going to follow the shape of this eye and this pinkish turn that he's got. And then bring that across here. I'm then going to use the Venetian red and this is going to start bringing in these details so darken along this line and I'm just again following the shapes just drawing in shapes I can see it's darker here I'm then going to grab my slice tool, which is, sorry, it's up here. Um, and I'm going to use the slice tool to create the little highlights that's going on. So we've got a little highlight coming around this eye here. And here. Okay, and then I'm going to take the ivory in that highlight here. And then the core, no, the warm grey free. I'm just going to rub down the side here to give that greyish pinkish tone that I can see. Grab that Venetian red again. Okay. Um, going to grab.
grab my white um, and I'm just going to lighten this cold grey one. So I'm going to use that white here. Um, grab, go back to the uh, one grey free and I'm just going to curve some of this grey warm tone down. Now remember this is only a small eye so I'm not including all the details I can see. It's not a large eye, we don't want a huge amount of detail. Um, the cold grey free. Along here. Um, and then I'm going to take that Venetian red. And I can see there's a little like vein detail, so pop that one in and and here. Okay, right, so now we can go in and darken some of the um the outlines again. So I've got the put mortem and I know that I can darken here. Darken around the eye a little bit. And I'm just going to very lightly just add in that put mortem there. And that's coming down here. bring that across um, and then got my light flesh or beige red and I'm going to use this as the base layer so I'm going over the top of that put mortem here first and along here where we know it's going to be darker so I'm just going to start pushing some of that pigment into the paper just applying this like I would any other base layer but going over the top of that colour that we've already added down and bring that down here and along here now this dog has like a wet tear line um, and I think I'm going to um, make it look dry on my reference on my drawing um, so I'm not going to worry too much about this wet fur, I'm going to just make it look like it's dry. Okay, so that's the beige, beige red. Um, I'm just going to take this put mortem, especially along here, and just start to slowly blend it outward. So very short lines, it's just going to help with that blend and in here. Grab my cinnamon, go over that put mortem and gently into that beige red. Sorry if you can hear my stomach guys. I don't know if it's loud enough to be heard or not. Um, and then back over the beige with the beige red. And all this is just helping to get a nice smooth blend of those colours. Um, and then back to the beige red and I'm just going to bring this beige red down from this eyelid and that's going to start blending into that fur and we want it in that corner here take the cinnamon so, so again a lot of back and forth but we're starting to really get a nice eye here Um, and go back to the put mortem. Actually, I'm going to take the red violet along here. Just along that bottom bit. And then I can blend that into this part of his eye or her eye. And along here. Okay, right. Take the one grey one 
in the corner here. Go over that with the cinnamon. Yep, cinnamon. And then the Venetian red. In that corner as well. Okay. Uh, back to the dark sepia. And we've got sort of like these little eyelids coming on, so. And bring that down. And then I'm going to take the cold grey one. Just to finish off this eyelid. Followed by the warm grey one. And then back to that dark sepia. And just blend very lightly out so that it all looks smooth. Um, back to my cup mortem, just in this part of the eye, and I'm going to very gently glaze over the top of that cold grey and warm grey mix there, like so. And then it's back to the warm grey one here, just to finish off this eye. So there's quite a lot going on with this eye. Uh, and the beige red. So not every eye is easy. <laughs> but some eyes have a lot of detail. And we could have gone into a lot more detail with this eye. But um, it's small and I don't want to add too much in there. Um, so we're going to be going on to the fur around the eye. To cement the eye in place. And because it's a liver dog. I think I'm going to stick to using ivory as a base tone. Rather than the warm greys. So we're going to be using a lot of ivory on this dog. Um, maybe some of the beige red and yeah we'll go from there so I'm taking my ivory and I'm going to start with this area here which is dark so following the fur direction just so that I'm, I'm kind of mapping it out in my head where I'm going I'm going to get my putty eraser again hang on okay so I'm just going to lift some of this graphite um, graphite lines and then go back in with the ivory and I think I'm just going to take this ivory um, so keep removing graphite lines if you've got them and I'm just going to take this ivory around the eye um, and then we can just go straight on to mapping in the fur over this base layer of ivory And sort of go from there um, for having this eye done. So I just want a nice sort of coverage. About, yeah, about this much for now. That'll do. Okay, so we have a nice gingery looking colour here. So um, I'm going to start off with the burnt ochre as sort of like another base layer to build on top of with our um maybe our red violets and our walnut browns um so burnt ochre and especially on this like eyelid section i'm just going to take this burnt ochre and i'm making sure now that i am following that fur direction So we want these pencil strokes to be going in the direction of the fur. Not pressing hard, you can see I'm using medium pressure. And that's sort of just coming to about here. Then I'm going to take the burnt sienna and it's got quite a harsh edge here so 
come down with that burnt sienna and then along here. So I'm not going to go too dark with this section yet because so this section of his eye so it's going up and over his eye, eyebrow um, we've got a bit of fur behind his head here that I want to draw it in um, but I'm not doing that part of the fur yet so I'm just kind of mapping in just the tonal values for now around this eye and then the next part we can um, sort out uh, the actual colours that we want to use. Um, I'm then going to take my bista and again just following fur direction coming around this section of the eye now. So this point is just kind of like mapping in tonal values rather than details and I just want to map in the fur direction and get the colours in um, just so that the eye is sort of set in place and I know what to do for the next part. Okay, um, then one our Van Dyke brown. So taking the Van Dyke brown and again just following that fur direction. Okay, um, let's have a look. So we've kind of slowly mapping in this fur direction. Um, I'm going to do the same. Um, on the bottom part, so this is just the Van Dyke brown again, and again, just slowly mapping in um, fur direction. Take my uh, burnt sienna, wherever I put that, because it's more of an orangey tone here, so burnt sienna. Okay, so you can see we're going to be using quite a lot of the brownish reddish tones for this guy or girl i don't know why i keep saying guy it could be a girl <laughs> um okay so i'm going to start bringing in some detail so i'm going to take my nugget now um i'm going to sharpen this first right so with the nugget again following that fur direction top of this eye Nice and sharp. Hang on, let me just get rid of that bit of pencil. I don't know if that happens to anybody else when they sharpen a pencil. I just get quite a bit of pigment from it the first time they come back to using it. Just brush it away. Um, okay, so this is the nugget and I'm making sure I'm following that fur direction now. Very closely. And I'm going to do the same down here. It's just where I can see this kind of nuggety tone. Sharp pencil strokes. Okay, um, with my burnt sienna just going to bring this over the top of this area of the nugget. I think with this dog there's going to be quite a bit of the slice tool possibly. Um, and it's probably going to be a fairly long tutorial like the Border Collie. But with this dog you could probably go ahead and do a lot of the piece without following the tutorial. So we're going to do this eye. Um, obviously in this tutorial get the fur in and then the next tutorial will be bringing the fur back and starting part of the ear working on the ear and then coming back across the face so you can do it in whichever order you want um, back to the burnt umber um, spaniels can be quite complicated I know not everybody likes drawing them I really enjoy drawing spaniels I find that they're really relaxing um, and I know that liver-coloured dogs can be quite hard for people, so 
Why not throw them all in one? I'll give you a, a liver coated spaniel, make it really hard for you all. <laughs> okay, so this is the burnt umber and then the put mortar. I'm going to take that over the top. You can see I've started getting some little fur details coming through, which is nice. Okay, right. Uh, this bottom section, the Van Dyke Brown. And then my Red Violet. Um, this has definitely got some really nice red tones in this dog's coat. Make sure that you're following that fur direction so that needs to curve a bit more here. And then that red violet. Okay, so you can see I've left a gap because I need to blend the fur into the eye. Um, and I wasn't, at first, I wasn't quite sure what colours um, I was going to use, but. I think we're going to use, first of all, apply the base layer of warm grey one. Um, so this is what I do sometimes. If you're not sure what colour to use, leave a little highlight, get a bit of the fur in or the next section below in. And then you can kind of start working it out from there. Um, I'm going to take my nugget very gently run along here. my burnt sienna now i'm going to use this very lightly in this section but start bringing this down for the fur over the top of everything there um, and then my venetian red in this section here over the top of everything And then I'm going to grab my Burnt Umber very lightly, just in this darker area. My Warm Grey Free now, and I'm just going to apply more pressure and get that nice greyish tone with the eyes blending into the eyelid and over the top here as well. Back to my Beige Red. You can see we now get that nice blend into the fur. Um, get my Van Dyke Brown. And it's just going to add some little fur strokes. Go back over here. Grab my Red Violet. And add another layer. And just a few pencil strokes coming through for the fur. Burnt Sienna, so it's again, it's going to be a lot of swapping and changing of pencils for this piece. A lot of the browns. That's the Burnt Sienna there. Okay, right. Uh, my cinnamon, I'm just going to darken that corner. Okay, so you can see how we've now got a nice blend between the eye into this patch of fur. Um, so we can darken up the fur a little bit more here, so my red violet. Um, and I'm going to take my um, burnt sienna. Over the top there. Um, and actually, I'm just gonna go over those highlights, they were a bit too bright and in your face. <laughs> right, um, my dark sepia, and I'm just gonna add some of these darker lines for coming down there. Just 
just add some like eyelashes coming down here. Okay, yeah, I'm getting really happy with this eye actually, really happy. Um, okay, so I need to darken in here. So I'm going to take my cup mortar. I'm just going to darken here. Um, and then grab my nugget. Bring that down, blend upwards. Again, I'm making sure I'm always following the fur direction. Always following that fur direction. We want to get that structure of the eye in properly. Right, I'm going to take my burnt sienna again. Um, very lightly and I'm just going to get some nice reddish tones coming through this darker section here. Now again, I'm not going to fully finish this section um, of the fur because... Um, I want to get the top part of the fur in first. Um, then I'm going to take my walnut brown. And the walnut brown is going to really start to darken some of these shadowed areas so along here. And down here. And then I'll take that burnt sienna and just go over the top of that again. Start with that blend. And very lightly with the burnt sienna here. Um, and then I'm just going to take that cinnamon. Over here. So this part of the fur is going to look very unfinished. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, just grab my ivory for a base tone here. Okay, so um, I'm going to take the cinnamon again. Along here. So there's going to be quite a few pinkish and purplish tones in liver fur. So keep an eye on those tonal values that you can see and the colour shifts. So that's the um, cinnamon. Then I'm going to take the Venetian red. Along here as well. I may need to extend this a bit higher, but we can do that afterwards. Um, and then to the burnt sienna. Um, yeah, I think actually I need to, that needs to be about there, doesn't it? Um, and then take the light flesh, uh, beige red, beige red light flesh. Um, they change the name, so whichever pencil you've got. It's the same pencil, they just change the name. In there. Um, and then the put mortem. Just going to add some little loose hairs. Just to show that that's what's going on here. Right, so in this section of the fur, um, she does have um, a wet tear line. I'm going to ignore that and I'm going to make it look dry. Um, so to do that, I'm going to first of all come in with the uh, base layer again of the ivory. And I'm just going to use the colours that are surrounding this fur. So what you've got on the reference photo, which if you want to copy, you can copy it. Um, you've got like a Payne's grey bluish tone. Um, we're going to keep it um, to the liver tones. So I'm going to stick to the burnt sienna's. Um, and the walnut browns and we're going to create um, just some fur, just some dry fur. So I'm going to start off uh, with the beige red and I'm just going to follow this darker section here is coming down. So I'm going to take my um, kaput mortar and I am going to bring this darker line down because this is part of the eye structure. So we're just going to bring that down here, just blend outwards and blend that little bit outwards as well. I'm then going to take my cinnamon and I'm just along the bottom of this eye, follow that fur, it's curving round here. 
and here is going sort of straight up and just follow that fur direction there um, I'm then going to take my burnt sienna and again just following that fur direction and building it up very slowly very lightly okay and then take my beige red again and I'm just going to really darken in here so that's going to give you the like the skin of the dog with this beige red um then i'm going to take my red violet very lightly just going to really define that part of the eye making sure that i'm just making sure that the structure of this eye is correct even though we're making this look like it's dry fur, we still want the structure of the eye itself to be correct. Um, and then my Van Dyke Brown. So as you can see, we're just building up the layers, the tonal layers that I can see. And then I'm going to go back over all of that with the Burnt Sienna. And there we go, we've got a nice dry eye now. And this is just by studying the colours that are around around the eye, but also knowing um, knowing your dogs will help a bit as well. Uh, this is the Venetian Red. Just going to use this to help blend. And then get, grab my cinnamon. just in here as well so you can see now that we've got a dog's eye but we've also got um, a nice dry bit of fur coming together there so I'm just going to do a little bit more of this fur um, especially along here so I'm just going to bring this down a little bit more with the ivory um, so just on this section I feel like I want a little bit more definition to the fur um, so I take my nugget or nougat, I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it, but nougat, nugget, <laughs> uh, just along here. Then the burnt sienna over the top. Again, I'm using, you can see just how light the pressure is, not pressing hard at all. Go back over that with a nugget. And then I'm going to take the Kaput Mortem. Um, actually, the Kaput Mortem Violet, because uh, it's got a purplish tone. And I'm going to bring this from this eye. So I'm going to add some little fur details. And then I'm just going to bring that over and down into here. So just add some little fur details and then bring that down. Now I'm not dark, fully darkening this up um, and you can see we can still see some grain in the paper. That's fine. Um, we'll come to that um, in the next part when we really start adding the fur and blending it. Um, just bring the Kaput Mortem into here as well. Okay, right. Uh, the Ivory. Um, and I'm just going to bring a little bit more into here. So with this bit, I'm now going to take the cinnamon because it's going to get lighter along here. So I'll take the cinnamon. And this is just to help us when we get to part two and we keep going with this piece. Um, and then the nugget. Again, I'm not pressing hard, I'm just mapping in these values just to help me when we come to the next part of doing the fur on this dog's head. Okay, yeah, I'm happier now, now that I've sort of made this fur a bit long, larger. 
of an area. Uh, this is like a put mortem. It's just helped me to define that space around the eye a bit better. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, maybe we'll do a little bit more fur. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm coming in with the ivory. I'm going to get this like section of fur in here. Bring that down. So, um, ivory is a base layer, then I'm going to take my uh, nugget, nougat, nugget, <laughs> somebody's going to have to tell me how to say that, maybe I'll have to google it, um, and over the top. Now, the, my pencil stroke's getting a little bit longer, the, she's got quite long fur here, not, not too long, but I am using longer pencil strokes. Um, I'm gonna go over that with the cinnamon, especially along the top here. Um, and then grab in the Venetian red. It's going to be quite a bit of back and forth again just to build up the layers and the colour that I want um, for this dog. Uh, the Cut Martin Violet, just, that's going to sort of lighten this edge here. And bring that down here as well. Um, my, sorry, I'm just trying to work out the best way to do this. Burnt umber, I think. I do find that liver dogs like this take the longest because, as you can see, we're building up many different layers and colours. So I do find they take a while to build up. This is the burnt umber. Um, and then I'm going to go back to that nugget over the top of all of this. Um, grab my walnut brown. I'm just going to use this to add some detail. And that area here is going to be quite dark, so I'm just going to darken. So you can see how we're really starting now to sort of get a shape to the face. The eye is really nicely set in place. Um, I'm just going to grab my red violet. I can see that I want to really darken here, so. Nice sharp point with this red violet, um, and then the dark sepia over the top, just in this corner. It's not quite dark enough. Just darkening this eye up ever so slightly along here. Got a really sharp pencil point just to really sharpen up this um, the edge detailing. Um, over the red violet again. And then dark sepia along here. Sorry, that's the dog sneezing that you can hear. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just going to darken. Uh, 
um, grab my, actually I'm going to take the um, Caput Mortem Violet, where I've put that, um, just to darken the edge of this eye, I think that's going to really, yeah, that's going to help a lot. Uh, this, so this is the Caput Mortem Violet, just along that edge here. Um, my Warm Grey Free, just here. And then if I grab the Burnt Ochre again, press harder. Along just where I want some more of those orange tones showing, that's really going to sort of brighten this eye up. Um, take my ivory in that little section here, just to sort of dilute almost, knock back that colour. Um, I'm sanguine. So you can see I've just come back to this eye and I'm just, now that I've got some of this fur in, I just want to enhance this colour along the edge of the eye especially. Yeah, I'm really happy with this now, really happy. Uh, the Venetian Red, just again. Along here. Okay. Right, I think we're going to leave this eye here. Um, we've got a really nice amount of fur starting to show. Um, and a nice blend with the eye. Um, I don't want to go too far onto this bit yet because we're going to start coming, bringing this fur down and onto the ear um, in part two. So I know there's a lot of colours, there's a lot going on with this eye, but I hope you have enjoyed this part of the tutorial um, and that I wasn't too quick. Um, obviously we need a lot of detail to come in yet, but yeah, I will chat to you all soon. If you haven't commented um liked or subscribed to the video please do um subscribe to my channel it really helps and um, we do full tutorials each month and um i'm going to start doing some mini tutorials in between um and yeah i will see you all in the next one bye everybody